Aha. Had the audio off. We'll wait for it to sync here. I'll say hi to a few people who are waiting for it to show up. And it was not familiar. It's a live stream. Hi, Tracy, Stephen, Ken, Albert, Mamanox, Yaman, Lori, Lunar, Sergeant, Aqua, Huma, Sylvia, DC, Bob, Alex, Kate, uh, ooh, Kelly, Char, Sylvia, Max. Well, oh, getting a few people in now. Hi, Mickey. Janet, Starlight, Wannabe, 24, Mike, oh, Alex, I'm getting lots of people, Diver, Dude, Anna, Annie Beck, she changed to um, Annie Beckett, I can't, I guess you're having a problem with you, Annie, I should pop up here on the screen here any second, Okay, hang on. I'll go check it out. Sylvia, Max. Well, yeah, we got her. Whoopie doo <laughs> I think I'm under attack. Big time. I'm getting kicked off unimaginable. I've been doing this for eight years, so I'm not going to go into detail because it'll give away some of the techniques I use, but... And I don't think I've ever said this before, have I? That I think I'm under attack because it's been a couple of years since I've been hammered. I've had five computers destroyed, um, say, in almost eight years. And it was that usually only after getting into big internet fights. Uh, but anyway, forget about that. The video is streaming, everything is good. I'm adding people to the comment list so you can comment if I see you marked it's spam. That's the best I can do. That's a new Google service. Google. Google. And just before I start, I just want to say um, Fukushima forecast on May the 2nd. Cesium 137 and iodine 131 over northwestern USA. And this was the Norwegian Institute for Ear Research. Now, so what I'm saying here is important for what's coming up. Uh, we had the Swiss, says uh, Fukushima radiation forecast maps. The latest shows particles traveling across the Pacific. That was September the 7th, 2011. Uh, CCM 137 forecast shows near surface radiation cloud over Texas, Western USA on April the 15th and the 16th. Uh, the Northern Hemisphere near, 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 near surface. And that was your RAD project, um, the University of Cologne, April 14, 2011. That's three foreign countries talking about plumes from Fukushima. Fukushima forecast, uninterrupted line of radiation stretching across the Pacific, tracking towards west coast of USA and Canada. Once again, that was Norwegian Institute, uh, 2011. Let me see what else I got here. Latest forecast has all of California under radiation threat April 6th and 7th. Shows levels as high as in Japan, April 4th, 2011. That was Norwegian Institute. Uh, Daily Yamuri. Fukushima government deleted the radiation forecast data starting the day of the quake and can't confirm who did it. And we know they made uh, 5,000 models of the plumes, the dispersions of... Excuse me, burping while I'm talking there. In the first 52 days, 5,000 models, that's 90-something models a day, 96 models or something, every day of the death plumes coming out of Fukushima's melted three melted reactors, and a detonated, number four, that caught fire two different times. And in those first couple of days, there was a serious, massive release. And I, as I just explained to you, from Swiss, from Norwegians, and from those other countries, forecast map of radioactive clouds shows threat to the U.S. West Coast, March the 16th. That was the Belgium Institute. So that's uh, four countries or five countries. Hang on, we'll find one more. New type of Fukushima forecast shows radioactive cesium and iodine over large sections of USA and Canada. And that was April the 25th. That was again the Norwegian Institute. 
Uh, so there's no shortage of these, right? Is there? Because I got an awful lot here anyway. So, that brings me to my first clip. I only got three clips. Oh, I got four because the fort one was something else. Uh, so here we go. With the, let me double check with everybody. Make sure everything is streaming before I go down that road. Oh, I didn't go to the live control room. I don't have the comments sitting up here. It said it wasn't receiving my data, but I am streaming, so I'll just keep streaming. Have I ever sat on a chicken aviator? No. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that road. It's too naughty for me. I can get into trouble here tonight. Okay. So I'm going to assume all is well. Kasut Sunup uh, just said, Hi all, in as well, I'm in as well. Okay. So the first clip is the link I got below, but I'm going to play it just for people that I haven't checked it out yet. And the NRC has held more than 150 public meetings to get input on our Fukushima work and share progress. Sorry. The NRC re receives re regular reports on the status of the Fukushima site Sorry, from the government of Japan and the Tokyo Electric Power Company as they continue their work at the damaged reactor buildings. We're also closely coordinating with other U.S. federal and state agencies regarding information about current concentrations of radioactive contamination in the Pacific Ocean. Based on the best scientific information available, no agency in the United States or abroad has identified any evidence of concerns for U.S. food and water supply or public health. That's uh, Allison McFarland, or is it McFarland? Yeah, McFarland. With the NRC. And she's saying there's no evidence whatsoever of any risk or any concerns, not only from their government, Americans, but from any other country. How, how are you supposed to deal with someone like this? What do you say to, when people do this? You know, what's the sense of having these people if they can't find the stuff that I just read before I came online? Hang on. Radioactive fallout and rain ten times more than reported. Um, than originally reported. So whenever you hear these numbers of rain, there's usually ten times more than what they're reporting on. And radioactive rain had caused 130 schools in Korea to close, yet the rain in California had ten times at that time, radioactivity, and it didn't close the schools. Hang on. Oh, my computer's been a bugger. What else is now? I don't know what's going on here. I gotta go to Hardway. Hang on. Oh. CCM-137 levels in Northern California soil hit post Fukushima peak September the 6th, 2011. She can't find that. Strawberries and mushrooms with CCM 137 found in Northern California. Five or six items in the food chain. Samplings test have radioactive particles at the University of California at Berkeley. She never tried very hard, did she? And, of course, Fukushima forecast shows cesium-137 and iodine-131 over the northwestern USA on May the 5th. That was the Norwegian Institute we talked about a little bit earlier. And every three, iodine-131 is a iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. And none of this travels without the buckyballs, and there's a link below to peer review studies about that, and how they can ingest uranium plutonium particulates and particles and radioactive atoms and become a little nuclear engine because he sprayed salt water, sulfur, because of the phenomenon of spraying sulfur on a melted core. You gotta realize how unprecedented this all is. And they don't they're not salutable in water. But you'll hear the lawyers out there that are saying that plutonium and cesium wouldn't um, you'd only find iodine or something. You would only find cesium maybe or something like that. 
you know, you can, this stuff can't travel by itself. This stuff, the reactors are made of plutonium and uranium. And these com these combinations, these uh, concoctions, because these isotopes or these plutonium and uranium mixtures that they're using at Fukushima is what's known as MOX fuel. And this is where they took uh, about 20,000 nuclear warheads that have already been through the chain reaction and are highly enriched and extraordinarily toxic and potentially uh, volatile. Uh, but now they're milling it again after it sat around for decades. It's the most horrible thing we can imagine. Because you change the alphas, the betas, the gammas, you change the x-rays and the neutrons by just putting it through the chain reaction once. But by keep doing it and refining it and milling it. Right? And so that was the idea of bringing the plutonium, milling it till it was like 100% plutonium. Because if you can get it down with no trace minerals or trace irons, or trace americanium or whatever the case may be in it, it's more volatile. Like a pound is a pound is a pound, but trying to get it down to where it's purity of a pound is a whole different story, see? And so people will try to say a pound of feathers is a pound of feathers, but a pound of feathers with chicken, wing, with chicken bones in it is not a pound of feathers, you know? Or a pound of feathers attached to the chicken is not a pound of feathers. It's only a pound of feathers when you tear the feathers off any extra weight, right? And then you weigh the feathers themselves. And so that's what we're talking about with enriched uranium and rich plutonium is where you got rid of the or or the other byproducts that, you know, are issues. Not really issues, but are just naturally dear. And somehow that makes it even more... Uh, covered it again by doing that to it. So they enrich this down till it's almost 100% pure. That's a different ball game. It's a completely different ball game. <clears throat> and a lot of people want to argue about that. But this lady, Alison McFarlane, saying there was no proof that anything showed up in America, that there was no health concern. Well, what about all the stuff I read so far? What about, you know, that cesium-137 forecast? That's near the surface, all the way from the jet stream down to the surface. Does she think that's going to evaporate? Does she think that's going to turn into potassium-40, like Thunder Dickhead? Thunderfoot? Phil Mason? Or Jay Cullen? Or that creature, unimaginable creature that I've done a video of today, Ken uh, Burst... Buesler, is it? I can't even pronounce it now. Buesler from the Woods Hole Institution, who right, uh, graduated in the 80s and went down to Fukushima and studied uranium and plutonium. Uranium and plutonium. And then he walked away. And then when Fukushima happened, he came back on board again. Now he's out running around giving these lectures. And that's quite the revealing one today where the regulatory like Allison, who by the way, you know, how much uh, does she allow McAllister's bomb manufacturer, McAllister, Oklahoma, that only makes dirty bombs that they go down and fire into Iraq and Afghanistan? That's all McAllister makes is dirty bombs for the A-10 Warthog, for the Abrams tank. It's 10 pounds, it's uranium-238. It's not coated, it's not tipped. As they fire it through the sky, it releases the radioactive atoms, and so it contaminates that area in the worst possible way. Because it's pyroplastic, as it's going through the air, you know, for it, it catches fire, and that's releasing at such a high speed. It's releasing these atoms, no different, really, than if you if you uh, burned them and released them into the environment. That's incredible. And she's talking today at the NRC, at the Senate's hearing, and they're talking about Yucca, Utah Mountain, or Yucca Mountain, whatever it is, about how they want to store that stuff there. They don't care about that. They're shipping 20 train car loads of dirty bullets down, and which are all dirty bombs, to fire into the Muslim country. That's why there's no babies in Iraq, in Iraq or Afghanistan that are safe. And in Fallujah, where they used an incredible amount of DU, which is uranium-238. It's left over from the production of enriched uranium plutoniums. It's this concoction. And Thunderfoot showed up today and said the 41 miles of open pits at Hanford 
of yellow cake was perfectly fine. Like, how do you reason with somebody like that? When the whole world is trying to develop technology to put it in a sarcophagus, and after 70 years still haven't done it, where this lady, Allison, claims that they're doing everything right, everything by the book, they got 3,900 members, and they're poking it all away, and they're watching everybody, and they're making sure there's no health concern, but to come out with that statement and say that there is no evidence, that, that what is wrong with you people that you are not holding her to account? What is wrong with everybody? If we had a million people come out right now, she wouldn't be able to poke her face outside her door for the rest of her life. She knows what she's doing. She knows she's murdering all those children, in particular, in Iraq and Afghanistan, by continuing to let, instead of putting it in a sarcophagus, like, you know, it gets on a slow boat to Iraq and Afghanistan. And McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in Oklahoma, that's all they make is uranium dirty bullets. The A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half a minute. That's 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation per minute. You know, and these, because they went through the chain reaction, they're left over from the processing. The gammas and the betas and the alphas and the neutrons and the x-rays are completely friggin' different on the scale of millions because they went through a chain reaction. You change the very composite of its properties by doing that. That's... Common knowledge. Everything I'm talking about is common knowledge. She's saying she protects the public because she's with the NRC and she's running all of these hokey pokey games there. And let's go to another one. Let's go and do another one that she's talking about. Number two. I got it down this time. My apologies. But I mean, my goodness. You know, with a straight face, she's saying that on C-SPAN, where everybody can see her, where all the media can look at her and call her out, and we got to come here tonight and do it. Chicken necks. Like my computer, it's gone chicken neck. I mean, we're waiting for it to pop up. We'll say hi to a few people. Hi, Pam. No, they don't care, Pam. Uh, hi, Miss Milky. I don't see you yet, but I seen your name get mentioned. Oh, my computer went doing. And I will do it again. Hi, Anna Beck. Hi, Ken. Hi, Mike. I think it's important that you talk to my counsel and that you also speak with those who advise us because our understanding is the privilege that you are suggesting is absolutely off the wall. You'll get it in a second. Uh, and our understanding from every legal expert here is that you can assert uh, executive privilege or your Fifth Amendment right not to incriminate yourself. And you're talking about some separation of powers. Well, the arrogance of that is unbelievable. Because you wouldn't be here without the Congress. You That's wouldn't Boxer. be here without Senator the Congress Boxer. setting you up. You wouldn't be here. And you have to be subjected to oversight. And we have a right to document. And when you sit there and you tell me and you tell Senator Vitter, you're going to hand us all the documents we want, and then you don't? And then you say very sweetly, oh, I'll be happy to find out what if you, if you need any more. Yes, I need them all. And I need to know what whistleblowers are saying. I need to know that all, because I... I'll tell you. ...that I will uphold this Constitution and defend and protect the people that I represent. And the people. So here's Boxer talking to her, talking to Allison, saying... She swore under the Constitution she would never break it to, to protect the people. What about Hanford with 450 billion gallons dumped in the ground of, and dumped in the ground right out of, right out of the barrels? Yet the licensing that Allison says is they're going to put it all in the sarcophagus, but yet Allison says they're still developing the technology 70 years after. And that if you were to take a piece of this stuff the size of a banana, that and you walked into a restaurant, you would kill everybody in there, including yourself, in an hour. And then everybody who walked in that restaurant every hour till the end of time would die. You can literally, just a piece the size of a banana, wipe out the entire planet. I'll get back to Ken Buesler in a second. But how arrogant to say, protect the communities, 
when they release it over the communities all the time from these nuclear power plants. What are they supposed to do with it? And that's why they have a nuclear fallout in every community that has a nuclear plant. And every nuclear plant is pumping it out into the rivers or the oceans, whichever one they're on, so they don't murder a bunch of people in the community and get in trouble. They don't care. They just don't want to get into trouble. And they're all leeching off of you. Every fucking one of them. Excuse the language. Every one of them can't survive without sucking money out of your pocket. Not one of them. And every one of them are privately owned and privately funded on top of that. And then they suck all the money out of you for experiments in order to keep it in your life so you can never get rid of it. That's what Thunderfoot does. right? He does experiments with nuclear neutrons, just a weak shit. He plays around with water and sugar. And I went to read one of his papers. It was uh, $35 to read it. And I could only allow to look at it for 48 hours. Right? And so 4,800 peer review academic studies every day that we paid for. That you paid for. That your institutions, you paid for them. You paid for all the equipment in them. You paid for the professors, the tenor. You paid for the students. You pay for all their experiments. You pay for you pay for all of that. Every friggin' bit of it. Every cent of it. You pay for that. And there's 4,800 studies every day that are locked away in the ivory towers at Elsevier, Springer and Wiley. Publishing houses. They own 20,000 of the most prestigious publications on the planet. And they get to copyright all of that for free. And they go read Dummy, Retard, Monkey, monkey Man. Because that's what he looks like. That's what he acts like. And that's the way I'm treating him, because that's what he is. It's just like Allison. Where Allison, you know, she says she's taking a fifth or something. you kind of routine, because she won't give the information. But she's only there because Congress created them. She's only there because Congress funds them. She is part of the government. But now she's declaring executive privilege on certain information like travel. Where did you travel to? Well, I'm not telling you. Well, how come uh, instead of putting it in a nuclear cast or creating a physical container that can hold on to this stuff, you put it in bullets and fire it into poor people's countries? How, do you, can, how can someone sleep at night? How is this real? How can this ever be real? This can't be real, see? But it is. And we're here. It's actually real. Um, let me go to the next clip because there's only uh, the last one is only 15 seconds because but it's so it's pretty funny. So this one's about a minute. It's about safety. It's about accountability. It's boxer. And for you to withhold documents, which you admit that you are doing, she's talking to Allison. Phony legal argument is is beyond the pale. Maybe it winds up in court. Maybe we sue you. I don't know what we do. I. Want Maybe we sue you. Maybe it ends up in court. They get information from the people they created. So who the fuck is this person? Excuse me. Who the hell is this person? Well, the thing is, you know, if we don't flush it out, it never gets flushed out. If we don't talk about it, nobody talks about it. If we don't make some sense of it, nobody knows what to do with it. If we don't start somewhere, it can never start anywhere. Stephen? Kitchen? If we don't have a conversation, how the fuck are we ever going to get anywhere? I like what you're doing, but what's next? Well, what's next? I don't know. This is a start. This is a fucking start. For the first time in our history of humankind, this is our start. Where we call out these people where we point fingers and if nothing happens well, I don't know how the fuck would I know I'm on YouTube I'm a freaking blogger so many people ask me that question you know what's going through your freaking mind what's wrong with now what's wrong with right now why does it always have to be? What are we going to do next? This is what we're doing now. What comes next? Who the frig knows? Who could possibly know? Do I look like a Wall Street banker 
Do I look like I got Fox News fucking behind me? Do I look like I got CNN banging on my freaking door? What the fuck do you think is going to happen? We educate people and they take it to the next level themselves. But people need somewhere to go. People need a narrative that's actually fucking accurate. Without me swearing. But people need a narrative in order to even understand what the issue is. To be able to flush it out. And so this video came out today and this is the next step. We're here tonight. The next step is supposed to be the media calls it out. But we're here tonight because they won't do it. Because we got to do it. Whether it matters or not is irrelevant. The fact is we're doing it. At least that's a start. There's more than you're doing. That's more than just about anybody else there is doing. Unfortunately. Pathetically. Sadly. And it's a lot of work to get this far. It's hard to pull this off every fucking night. It's not easy to sit here and take the abuse all he takes with the manipulations of people like Ken Busler out there saying, you know, when it gets 1,500 miles out to sea, the cesium-137 turns to potassium-40. It doesn't. It can't. It's impossible. So why is he saying that? Because if he says it enough, then people don't know what to make of it anymore. Because Ken says it's like the background radiation of water. I'm not yelling at you, I'm yelling with you in that sense, but I'm yelling at you because you're here to learn or you're not. You're here to be informed or you're not. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to scream louder? Do you want me to swear louder? What do you want me to do? I don't have CNN at my door. I don't have anybody like that who's going to carry anything I say unless it's to demonize me and to marginalize me. I'm here to educate people. That's the best I can do. And I'm at it all day. I'm at it all night. I don't stop learning. And I share it. Not very hard for some people to, to think that that's big, no big deal. It's a big deal. It consumes every moment of my day and every moment of my night. And then I have to pull this off each night. And I have to put up with people saying, What's next? What's next is people pay attention. Even if I have to go to whistleblowers. That's where you should be going, boxers to the whistleblowers. That's what you're supposed to do is go to the whistleblowers. You're supposed to covet them. Instead of Obama and your administration is murdering them, locking them up. Not that it matters, I don't trust any of you anyway. You're literally all psychopaths, every bloody one of you. None of you got any kind of... new chairman and a new spirit here. Things will change. You know, but whether it's your travel, that some of you don't even you want to have buried, you ask us to make it confidential, don't tell people what we spent. What is that about? You're not above the American people. Yes, she is. I want you to travel somewhere. I want you to go to Japan. I don't know, some of these other places look like they're really fun to go to. I don't know how much they have to do with anything. But I, I, I'm hoping that you would go back and talk to each other and instead of going back and saying, oh, that Barbara Boxer, ooh. Oh, that Barbara Boxer, ooh. He's right. You got 45,000 barrels dumped off San Francisco. Of nuclear waste, the worst possible stuff on the planet. 30 kilometers off the coastline. She won't clean that up. She's not going to clean up Hanford. 41 miles of open pit. 450 billion gallons dumped directly into the soil. Not barrels, but dumped in the soil. Because they can't do nothing with it. They can't build a sarcophagus. They've been dumping it in the ocean forever. But now we're putting in a sarcophagus. They dump it in your lakes and your rivers and your ocean nonstop from the plants themselves, direct discharges. But we're, we got your safety in mind. There was no known issues from any other countries or America about Fukushima fallout. And I got dozens and hundreds rather. I got thousands actually now. I've done over a thousand headlines on this site in the last couple of months. And she can't find one. 
I don't know what, you know, when is enough going to be enough? When exactly, at what point is is it that something will happen? I don't know. If a million people came out, if a million people opened their fucking mouths, if a thousand people that watched this video all sat there and put out a 36, 37 second video and said, I think Allison is the wrong person from the job for her to ignore the information about Fukushima and claim it didn't show up here. I don't got no faith in her no more. And just ended the video. And if a thousand people tomorrow posted a video like that, she's finished. If a thousand people posted videos like that tomorrow on any of these mouthpieces out there, they're finished. Stephen, that's probably what I'm trying to do. What the hell do I know? I do know that would happen, that if we were able to pull that off. CCM 132nd, Second, seven detected in Virginia rain. June of 24, 2012. She can't find that one. I'm only using these certain examples for you. Just because they're easy. They're from uh, credible sources. Season 137 forecast shows high altitude radiation cloud concentrating over California. Western U.S. What do you think? It stayed up in the sky? It didn't fall out? It was 181 times acceptable levels of iodine, whatever that is, iodine-131, to keep raising it, iodine-131 in California, 181 times in the rain of the allowable limits of iodine-131. There is no safe limit, period. It's not supposed to be out there. None of these isotopes should be on the planet, released. These are all man-made isotopes. The uranium-238 from all the bullets, the dirty bombs, they're dirty bombs. 2.25 million dirty bombs a month in Iraq. 5 million bullets a month in Iraq. Look it up. You'll find the government's website. Go check it out. You'll read all about it. They're putting out, they want to make more. 2 billion rounds a year or more. They get 11,000 Taliban. 5,000 bullets a month. Half of them, 2.5 Five million of them are dirty bombs from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in Oklahoma every month. This this stuff is supposed to be in a sarcophagus. It's not supposed to be in bullets. After deforming animals and children and destroying aquifers, farmlands, entire communities, entire civilizations and races. They never stopped for nine years. That's what your tax dollars paid for is the sick demented people like Allison who okays all this year after year who says you got to produce 20, 20 train car loads of depleted uranium every day to keep your license you got to keep the wars going to get rid of that shit to keep your license you got to have an endless war or you're going to lose your license 20 train car loads a day of depleted uranium bullets which are dirty bombs Every one of them. And so, Allison keeps saying over and over and over, along with the rest of these people, I had a word about the terrorists getting hold of this shit. They're the terrorists. You're going in other people's country and firing dirty bombs all over it. Can you possibly get any worse than that? You got nothing. Al-Qaeda got nothing on you. You created them anyway. But like in the folklore world, they still got nothing on you freaks who allowed this to happen, who murder all those children, who murder that country, all the bio habitat in that country, who shot depleted uranium through every home in that country. There's five million orphans. There's two million widows. There's two million dead. There's around four million in refugee camps. They have no IDs now. They don't have any jobs. They can't get any schooling or any medical or any health. They can't build a home. They can't raise their children up without them getting raped, boys and girls, by the occupying forces. you got around 4 million that are missing and presumed buried in pits. The Americans 
Got 22 veterans committing suicide every day. When someone gets blown up in Iraq, they don't shut up for 48 hours. 29,000 rapes a year reported in the military is 28% of what they figure is happening. That'll be 290,000 over the last decade. That's a minotaur. That they raped of their own. Where they're shooting depleted uranium fucking everywhere. How many are they raping in the countries they occupy? They're raping their own that much. How many are they raping in the people they dominate if they raped their own that fucking much? For, and you're paying for it. 53 cents on every tax dollar goes to pay for raping countries. For raping the children, raping the women, creating the orphans, creating the carnage, shooting depleted uranium in everybody's homes, in their schools, into their distribution centers. And then we got the Senate committee talking about, for two hours, supposed to be talking about Fukushima, and they spend the entire time keep directing back to the terrorists. They're going to get their hands on the nuclear power plants that are military-industrial complexes, every one of them. They're there to make isotopes. The steam that they're creating is a byproduct of that process. And so they make power and sell it. And they disguise everything they're doing under that label as a power plant when every one of them are about solving mathematical equations for directed energy weapons. That's all isotopes are about. Solving equations for directed energy weapons. That's all the Halon Collider is about. It's about, they, they tell you one thing, but it's actually about directed energy weapons and spaceship engines. That Not that we can travel in the space. Men will go blind. Women won't, though. Women can travel. They'll still get killed by the cancers, but they don't have that limitation of going blind. And so if they can solve some of those other issues of the tumors, there's a start down below. It's called DCA. Reduces all tumors by 70%. And it's peer-reviewed, studied repeatedly over the last number of years. And it's an updated uh, study down below. And you got videos, and you link to all the studies. But there's no, there's no, you don't, you know, you don't need a, a pharmaceutical a prescription. This is a natural mineral. Uh, there's no patent on this, and there's no money in cures. And this reduced all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. It's ideal for leukemias because it unplates your blood. It's ideal for prostate and breast, lung, liver, brain, pancreas, cancers. Because it doesn't harm any cells. It only attacks the cancer cells. And But people like Barbara or um, Alison McFarlane, her job is to go out and turn a blind eye to the mass murders. Her job is to go out and sit in front of a camera and try to look pretty. Right, to be pleasant for people to look at. Why she just outrage, outrageously lies about her job and the things that she do. To come out and she's in charge of knowing this and doing stuff like that and, and, and dealing with it and helping coordinate it, the fallout. And she says, no, nope, nothing fell out in America. Nothing. Nothing showed up here. It's the most, it's a pathological lawyer can only sit there and say something like that. How can you sit there and say zero showed up in America when you're right under the jet stream and you're directly across from it? It took less than three days for it to show up all over America. We even got the Americans' models of the dispersion of 137. Hang on. Uh, model M O D E L. I'll find it for you. I'll read it. The headline, so you can go look it up yourself. Uh, is that it, too? Yeah, all of Western U.S. and most of Eastern East Coast, Midwest, Canada, covered with airborne particles at various altitudes on March the 20th. Fukushima plume model shows. To Canadian Health Canada, there's a link below. And Health Canada went out there in the plume. That's what they call it. They went out in the plume and flew their plane through the plume for 18 hours in the plume. Allison, Boxer, 
all you Congress people that were down there at that meeting. The Canadian, there's a link below. The Health Canada went out during a plane for four, uh, 18 hours and flew along the coastline, took samples every 15 minutes, and every sample was deadly. Every sample showed it was a snowstorm, a radioactivity, in updating the entire fucking continent. You bitch. And you sit there and say there's nothing out there. You arrogant traitor of humanity. You useless piece of shit is all I can call you. You're a piece of shit, Allison. You're a traitor to everything on this planet, to your family, your friends. And so is Senator Barbara Boxer. And so is Senator David Witter. And Thomas Carper. Senator Thomas Carper. And so is uh, Senator Jeff Sessions. And so is Bernie Sanders. And so is James Inkhoffy. What a monster that guy was today in that link below. All of these people, all of these, and Roger Wicker, Senator Roger Wicker. What an unbelievable traitor to humanity these people are. The evidence is in the video below. It's up on C-SPAN, and it was up on everybody's TV, and not a friggin' person on this planet called him out. Not a friggin' friggin' person on this planet can call him out. I'm talking media. Not even the shitty media out there. You know, we're lacking courage besides the wisdom, which is understandable. It's a complicated issue. But it don't take much to see through that lie. I could sit here for eight hours nonstop and destroy everything about that person. And these people who sat there across from McFarland, they're just as culpable as she is. They don't correct her. They don't stand up for America. You heard Senator Boxer said, I made a promise I will stand up to the Americans. Wah, wah. Not once. She had every opportunity to say the things I've said tonight. The headlines, read those headlines tonight. Well, what about this? What about all that iodine? What about all that cesium? What about all those hot particles? Right? Hang on, let me find some of that hot. Let me see. There you go. I got so much on my computer, I don't need to even go on the internet anymore. I just got it all here. Hot particles bombarded the west coast of the U.S. and Canada. Contaminated farms and food sources in the U.S. That was Gunderson. Uh, December 27, 2011. She can't find that. Boxer can't find that. Sanders, Bernie Sanders can't find that. In Ingehoff can't find that. Uh... Scientist uh, Marco Kaltofin presents data confirming hot particles. 2011. Hot particles found at two or three U.S. monitoring stations. At their friggin' monitoring stations. November 1st, 2011. But she can't find none of that. How is that possible? Why? The same reason Ken Buechler is out there. He's not a nuclear scientist. But he's out there, and he told you in that video I done for you today, he explains to you how they use the background radiation of tap water, which is potassium-40, and if you drink it, you off-gas the same amount of potassium-40. So if they got 10,000 becquels, which are nothing, they're insignificant. They have nothing to do with radiation becquels. Nothing. Yet here was Ken. And many places, but the one I got there today was at uh, Helen Collicott. No one calls him out, but he's, he's at the Helen, Helen Collicott conference in 2011, 13. And he says, in some places in the U.S., it's acceptable to have up to 90,000 becquels in your drinking water, potassium-40. And that's why Fukushima is allowed to put out that much becquels, 90,000 becquels of cesium-137, because it's harmless. That's what he says. I got it there in the video today. But he does that all the time in all of his lectures. But that was really clear, and I had to, to do something about that. But then he says, and so the Americans, 
here in America, he said, we do the same thing with our plants here. We use the same kind of regulation. So they're using the regulation for your tap water, which is potassium-40, and then they flip it and say, it's the same thing for cesium-137. Well, I friggin' dare you. I dare any of you to drink a cup with 90,000 Becquerels of cesium-137 in it and tell me it's the same fucking thing. I dare any one of you to walk into the same room because you won't do it. I won't fill the glass up and put it there because I'm not that stupid. But I'll give you a glass with 90,000 Becquerels of potassium-40 because it doesn't hurt you. I mean, that's extraordinarily high. Don't get me wrong. But it's got nothing to do with cesium-137, which, by the way, traveled from Fukushima because of the max fuel with 30 times more strontium. 30 times more strontium. So why are we talking about cesium? Why do we talk about iodine with an 8-day half-life when 131, when there's iodine-129 with a 15-million-year half-life, and for every three iodine-131s, there's an iodine-129? And nobody bothers mentioning it. Nobody even cares. There's a whole lot of iodines. Iodine-132 is ingested 10 times more readily, and it's the biggest part of the release, was iodine-132, but we never hear that mentioned. We always hear iodine-131. Hot particles found at two out of three U.S. monitoring stations during April, including Boston, the government's own stations, and she's saying, like the video I played earlier for you, that there's no evidence. Right? So why are all these senators not calling her on it? And then why is the media not mentioning it? Because they wouldn't do it, of course. But I'm just saying, you've got to realize what's truly going on here. It's not that this doesn't exist. It's just that these creatures won't mention it. They won't even acknowledge it. And not only that, the most worst part is they lie. Because that's a lie. That's an outrageous lie. It's an unbelievable lie. How can you ever... Well, everything they say is useless because they told that lie. There's nothing they could ever say in the future, or anything that they ever said in the past has any weight to it because they told that lie. And because of that lie, everything they had ever said and everything they will ever say is useless, is meaningless, is pointless, and is a betrayal because you pay for those lies, which are life, which are children's cancer, which are cancer. So where's the accountability? It's supposed to be right there where they're sitting right now. The very senators that let her lie, let her get away with it for two friggin' hours, never held her to account once, has access to all the same information I do, knows everything I knows, yet plays the dummy. These are not stupid people, okay? They're not. Radio, health physicist in the U.S. worried about inhaling hot particles from Fukushima, either uranium, plutonium, etc., um, Columbia medical professor inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause cancer May 8, 2012 California had 1500 particles per cubic meter of air in April 2011 at the same time they had hot particles all the way in Seattle where people were ingesting at least 10 a day, everybody and all the way down Florida down to Mexico, all through Canada. And here's the Columbia medical professor inhaling just one radioactive hot particle and cause cancer. New York. Um, but she can't find any of them. Allison can't find any of that. Senator Boxer can't find any of this. Your media can't seem to find any of this. Jay Cullen can't find none of that. Ken Buesler can't find none of that. Phil Mason can't find any of that. These people are the most loathsome possible creatures on the planet. They're the lowest form of life on the planet. These are... They can't be that stupid. You can't be that stupid and still be functional, right? You have to be dysfunctional 100% and need home care all the time to not be able to work this out. 
when you're got the education that those people have, like Ken Buesler, like Jay Cullen, like Allison, like the other dummies, the useless idiots, like uh, Thunderfoot, who can't. None of these people are willing to debate any of that. They call it potassium-40. It turns to potassium-40, Dana. Have a nice day. Give me my check. And none of them are nuclear scientists. And so why are they in the media all the time? Where is all the nuclear scientists? And how come it's so difficult of a subject? Because all the dangerous isotopes have the exact same name for indigenous natural isotopes on purpose to confuse you with higher numbers of becquerels, like potassium. 40 is 10,000 becquerels, but 10,000 becquerels is cesium, 10,000 becquerels of iodine, 10,000 becquerels of strontium, 10,000 becquerels of uranium, 234, 235, 236, plutonium, 238, 239, 240, 241. It's a whole different game. Uh, you'll have to liquidate your assets to stay alive for a while longer if you drink a cup of that stuff. But these people all equate potassium-40, turn all of that stuff into potassium-40 with a magic wand and get away with it. And then people wonder why I'm upset, why I want to beat a chair off the side of their head, why I want to smash a table on their face, why I want to punch them in the head. People have a hard time wrapping their mind around why I get angry like that, why I have rage like that, where I disrespect these people so much, I don't think of them as humans anymore, where I think of them as punching bags. I'm not saying I would do that. I would say I would like to do that. Because I would. Because I don't see them like me and you. Because they're too willing to... They're in a position where they have the power and the ability and the knowledge. And they know the difference. And they choose to take that dark side. Because they work in that industry and they make money at it. If they speak out against it, they're doomed. And if they suck dick all day, then they do really well. And nobody knows that better than Tunnerfoot. You can see the lips on that boy. He's been under the table a few times. And probably liked it. I'm talking about how he sucks up to everything. How he doesn't have a, his own two feet to stand on. Where he has no authority. Where he has no conviction. Just like Jay Cullen don't. Just like Ken Buesler don't. You can tell by the way they wheeze and by the way they breathe. And by their posture, their body language is important. And if you don't know much about that, let me explain it to you. On my side is a few thousand artists. I chose them because I like their vocals. Because I put my headphones on, I listen to their vocals, and if they got really clean vocals, it doesn't matter if they're perfect or not yet, they will be in the future, but if they got that unique sound and they really got a clean, strong vocals, I'll choose them. I'll put them in my favorite. doesn't mean I like all those songs, it just means they're good artists and in the future they might produce a lot of good music and I don't want to lose track of them and I'm sure people will like them anyway just for at least one listen. They're certainly worth that. And if you don't, the next song you will. So when I was growing up, there was no TV, there was no radio, there was, um, say, gospel music. Elvis Presley was alive and doing well, but we lived in a place that still has no cars. And you talk to people all day. That's what you've done all day. And so you could read people, you can read the punchline in a conversation pretty, pretty good, pretty impressively. You can tell when someone was lying to you, it was acceptable to lie to you only if you told the truth immediately after. To tell a lie and not tell the truth immediately after, you would become the black sheep of the community. No one would talk to you for about 30 days. And so, obviously, not too many people were willing to take that road. And I've seen it a few times, alcohol usually, where people told an outrageous fabrication and that no one would talk to them for about 30 days and then everything was fine again. i never seen a fist fight in my life growing up. And, you know... It was that kind of uh, understanding of reading body languages that I still carry with me today. That's why I ran the fleets on the ocean all my life, was because I could read people. I understood. 
who I could trust to run the operation, run boats, who I can give to, who I can allow to dive. We lost a lot of people in seven days paperwork every friggin' time. Plus, you gotta deal with the family, which traumatized me every time. And you lose an extraordinarily um, close friend uh, too many times. And, you know, that affects you. And so you try to do better that, so that don't happen to your friends again. You try to make sure, you know, honor relentlessly that you don't make a mistake because it's such a dangerous world. And you just, it's not you, it's them. But you try to help them because they're new to it and you've been at it for most of your life. And so you feel that obligation. And so that's why I ran the fleets. I still had to spend six hours a day on the ocean floor, but I didn't care if I had to fix everybody's boat. I didn't care if I had to set up everybody's gear, if I had to give everybody fuel and steaks and cigarettes and bows and hookers and you name it. It's true. Whatever it took to run that and keep that running, that's what I've done. You had a couple of hundred people depending upon you to get up every morning, no matter what the weather was, and get on the bottom and do your job. Because it's not just you. And so you got up every morning because you're the beginning of it. Without you doing your job, nobody else can do their job. And so the whole world in that particular job sat on your shoulders. And I've always loved that. I, I thrived on that environment. I thrived best, you know, when I had a brand new boat, I had to learn the radar, the sounders, the VHS, the engines, the hydraulics, the compressors. The, all dive compressors are always different too. All the motors are gonna be different. All the, you know, all the transmissions will be different. All the fuses will be different, all the water pumps and the fuel pumps and the storage. And every boat is going to be different. No two boats are the same. No two boats are the same. But I bring that to this, what I do now, that attention to detail. And every boat that I've ever had, when I, let, when I finished with the boat, I went through the entire boat with a toothbrush and I cleaned everything on that boat. Nothing left that didn't get scraped and cleaned with a toothbrush and wiped down and scrubbed. And so the next crew had the same opportunity that I did. Right? And my job was to take over the operation, fire everybody, rehire, and spend money and make it work and move on to the next show. And that's what I'm doing all the time in my life now, is I have to go out and deal with each of these individuals, like the Buslers and the... Jay Collins and uh, Allison McFarlands and uh, Boxers and all of these people that make their living by lying and manipulating and che cheating and stealing and fooling and poisoning and murdering and allowing all that uranium-238 to be fired in other people's countries and then tell you they're worried about dirty bombs in their country when that's all they do is fire dirty bombs in other people's country. But you're worried about a dirty bomb in your country. All they do is grab one of the shells the Americans leave over there, come back, tie a bit of TNT onto it, and there's your dirty bomb. You made it. You created it. You just forgot to fire it into somebody's house because every house there already had a dirty bomb fired into it. It'll be about the only reason. Right, those senators don't support the 22 veterans who are committing suicide on the streets every day. One gets blown up in Iraq, they don't shut up for 48 hours. They don't open their mouths to the 300 raped every day in the military. They don't care about that. They certainly don't care about the truth. And Fukushima... The information that it came over to North America and is still here, it is everywhere, is not very hard to find. And so for Alison McFarlane to sit there and for none of the senators to correct her means uh, you have been stabbed to death now, officially. That's official, that they hate your guts, they think you're dirt, they think you're stupid, insignificant animals, and they don't care. They're just doing that for the record because they need to do it to get their paycheck and another couple of billion dollars. It's just a big game, and you're not in it. Um, once again, you know, I, I can't say 
what I really want to say. Because these are the people that will come after me if I make a simple mistake. But they make uh, vicious, violent, deadly mistakes that are not mistakes, that are intentional. And they read from a script, every friggin' one of them, in that link below. They're all reading from scripts. And they stick to it. Um, inhaling just one radioactive particle can cause cancer. And Seattle was sucking in 10 hot particles a day all the way through, all the way down to Mexico, Florida, California. California gets the most radiation for some reason. There's a huge, massive amount of piling in there. Yeah, good night, Janet. That's what I'm doing. You know it. It's just unbelievable that once again, here we are, half the yelling, screaming, calm down a bit tonight. Dirt bike. You don't hear that out there very much. Let me come in and see what I got done here. Yeah, good night, Janet. One hour, 39 minutes. Thank you. We say good night to everybody. Good night, Janet. Standing foot. Thomas, thank you. Stetson. Pam, Stephen, Sidel, thanks Stephen, Dragon6, thanks, checks and balances, Elizabeth, DC, Amthurst, 100 Tune, 100, 100 Tune, I can't even pronounce that one, Tooney, Elizabeth again, Mr. Hemi, Aviator, Mike, Anna Beck, Mama Knox. Hi, Mama Knox. Uh, Miss Milky was here too, I know. Stacy, oh, she's not here now, she'll be here later. <laughs> Two Stacys, Anderson and uh, Stacy Lane. Rob Reese, Loves Being, Albert, uh, Huma. Yeah, I get quite a few people tonight, that's pretty cool. Wanna be Nick, Pam, Dwayne, Lisa, Thomas, um, once again. Thomas, the C-H-O-E-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. I'm so bad with names, so I'll just spell it. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Lunar. Welcome in. Read everybody's comments after. Get uh, some dandelion tea. And um, I didn't realize we're so close to an hour, so I apologize. It's an hour and two minutes. Dirt bikes are going crazy out there. I have to go out and yell at them, I suppose. Let me see you do a wheelie. Let me drive that freaking thing. That's probably what I'll end up doing. Okay, folks, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thanks, John. Close. And Mama Knox, of course. We love Mama Knox. She's a sweetheart. Way too kind. Way too good to me. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. And I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow night. I got, you know, I got a few things going here. Uh, my tricycle is still, I'm going to have to ship it back, so I'm a little bit disappointed on that one. But whatever. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Take care.